Hello and welcome to the Strom Entrepreneurial Center. Thank you all for attending today's guests, Uversion, who are going to be challenging our innovative abilities today with a game called Imagine That. This event is sponsored by Strom in partnership with the Department of Communication and Theater Arts. It's formatted like a game show because who said learning has to be serious? Please give it up to our guest speaker. I appreciate you guys coming. This is really fun. You know, in the middle of a Tuesday at school to be able to play a game show, that's a little different, right? You know, normally, and Sarah's been a part of this, normally... We do our show, we do it in a bigger auditorium, we have a stage, we bring the contestants up and we get them under the lights. So it's kind of fun to do it a little more, scale it to our to our uh, group here and do it a little more intimately, but still do the same thing where we're gonna give you a chance to take a break from the grind today, kind of get into a creative space and collaborate and hopefully have a little fun, a little different kind of energy. So we're psyched, are you guys ready to do it? And we're fueled by pizza, so that's pretty good. All right, so let, let's get into the game, we'll get right at it. So imagine that, is the game based on three bedrock principles of Western civilization. The first is that it's fun to be creative. Second is that it's fun to be part of a team, and you guys will be today. And the third is that it's really super fun to pass judgment on other people, especially if you get to judge them anonymously behind the protective shield of your smartphone. So, and that's when the saw, that's cue the saw. There we go. <laughs> so, those three principles, like you studied them in school, right? They're kind of self-evident. They're all evident and imagine that. So let me explain to you how the game works. We're going to have two teams. We'll divide you up into two teams. You're going to be creative warriors today. You're going to compete in a creative sprint. It's a short challenge. You're going to have to use your imagination to solve. You and your teammates will work on the challenge. Then you're going to come back and present to everybody your answer to that challenge. Then we're going to use our phones, all of us, to vote for which team we think did the best job. We'll see the results of the vote. If this works, tally up here on screen real time. So that's super cool. Now we've democratized our competition here. And what I mean by that is you guys are all playing the role of contestants and judges, right? So this does require a certain amount of creative integrity on your part. So what I mean by that is, you know, when it comes time to vote, if you've heard the presentations and you really think your team did the best job, vote for yourself. Absolutely. You deserve it. You got to go for it. But if honestly, if you like thought the other team did a better job, you got to vote for them because that's the right thing to do. And that way we'll have a, a good competition and we can crown our champion based on our votes. Now, if there's a tie, it gets very interesting and we'll figure that out when we get there. But uh, we'll see. We got an even number. So, so we'll see. So that's how it works. I'll give you the challenge. You're going to huddle with your teammates for eight minutes to come up with your solutions. So eight minutes goes pretty quick, but so you got to be efficient when you do it. Then you're going to come back with your solution, present it uh, to everybody. Then we'll use our phones to vote. And we'll tally up our winner. We'll have it. We'll have a champion. Now, any good game show, when you have the winner, they give a prize. You go on the Price is Right. You get like a washer dryer. You get a, a, a trip to Cancun. You get a car. So we have a prize. You know, ours a legit game show. So we have a prize today too. Our prize is uh, full tuition to ODU. No, <laughs> I know, right? It's not a good for a minute. No, our prize is the Imagine That trophy. This is yeah. This is by no, without a doubt, the ugliest trophy ever. It's put together, for those of you at home who can't see, it's put together with duct tape and whatever random materials Sharon and I could find, we'd, we'd put it on there. But you notice the top, it's a brain because you're using that brain of yours, that imagination to get it. So you want possession of this. What happens if you win it, you get to own it until the next time we play. We're playing, I think, in about a month or so, a few weeks. So, so you get to be the possession. It's kind of like the Stanley Cup in hockey. It gets passed around from team to team, although it's a much much worse looking than the Stanley Cup, let's be real. But that's the prize. So you guys want to win this. I think, I think you do for sure. All right. So, so that's it. That's how it works. Everybody got a sense of how, how we're going to do it today? Everybody good? Okay, so we're going to get into the competition, but first, there's one thing we do before we do our challenge. In a team about, in a game about creativity and teamwork, we can do better than team A and team B, right? So your first challenge, just for two minutes, we're going to ask you to huddle together, say hello to each other, get to know each other for a second, and come up with a cool team name, the name you want to be known by for our competition. It's going to be a little cooler, kind of represent you as creative warriors a little better than A and B. And I'm going to ask you to write your name on a sheet. We'll hear from your team names, then we'll get into our challenge. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going to give it two minutes. I think we're dividing it half and half. Is that right, Sharon? Is that how we're doing it? All right, huddle together. Got two minutes. Come up with your cool team name. That's how you know it's a real game show when you have a bell. The other way is, you know, is I, got a, I got a sign for the microphone. You got to this is high end right here, right? I might not have been, offer, been able to offer anything better than a gnarly old trophy, but I got the mic sign. And when you hear this sound, it means we got to come back from whatever we're doing and come back to it. All right. So let's do real quick before we get into our challenge. I want to hear from our two teams. 
Team A, what's your cool name that you want to be known by as you get into this competition? Uh, in here, let me, uh, I'll let you talk into this. So go ahead. The Inner Snack Ovations. Inner Snack Ovations, because you like to snack? Yes, because we are eating pizza, so that counts, right? In a snack ovations, I like it. Anything with snack in it is going to make you feel positive, right? For sure. All right, excellent. So we'll call Team A, you guys, in a snack ovations. All right. What about Team B? What are you guys going to be known as for today's comp? Ooh, some good writing. The Lone Rangers. The Lone Rangers. Nice. Now there's three of you, so you're not really lone. <laughs> It's an oxymoron. Well, that's good. And there is some good, so there is some good, you both did some good, uh, some good writing. Love it. Okay, okay, the Lone Rangers. Excellent. Okay, good. Now we know what to call you as we go through this competition. And I think that's going to make it more fun. Great. All right. So, in a snack of Asians are going to be taken on the Lone Rangers, and we'll see who comes out as our creative champion today. Okay, you guys ready to do it? You ready to, to, for the challenge? All right, you're going to like this. Okay. So, our sprint is going to pick up on an important skill for entrepreneurs. Now, not all of you are on the entrepreneurial program, but all of you need an entrepreneurial spirit as you go off and start your careers. And certainly for entrepreneurs straight up, we have this important skill we're going to try to develop and work on today as we have a little bit of fun. And that skill is making your idea come alive for another person, right? So an entrepreneur often spends a lot of their time working up their business model and refining their approach and all that stuff they have to do. And if you're a student, you're, you're working hard, uh, what you're doing, but at some point you got to get out there, you got to sell it to other people, you got to get other people to, on board, get them excited, get them bought into your vision. And often that's a vision you are excited about. You need a way to translate that, to make that come alive in a compelling way. So whether you're pitching to investors as an entrepreneur, or you're trying to sell to your customers, or you're just trying to explain to your parents what you've been doing all this time, and you haven't just been playing video Video games, you actually got some, you're achieving something, whatever it is, describing your idea in a compelling way is essential to any entrepreneur and really anybody's success. So that brings us to this sprint. We call this sprint, Ted can make even this sound interesting. So yeah, we're talking about, if you want to think about compelling speeches and people who can make something interesting, Ted talks, right? They're amazing. Who's listened to a Ted talk before? Yeah, everybody has. They're like this worldwide phenomenon, right? And they're they're pretty cool. I mean, they, they make these topics come alive. And sometimes you listen to them and you're like, I didn't know I was interested in that until I heard the person talking about it. And wow, it's a, that's amazing. They really kind of know how to make the compelling kind of pitch, the compelling draw you in kind of discussion happen. And does anybody know what TED stands for? It's not a person. <laughs> I thought it was a person. It stands for technology, education, and design. So originally when they started, they focused their topics on those areas, but they've become such a phenomenon and they had such success, they've widened their approach. Their mission statement is really interesting, I think. Their mission says they are there to spread ideas and create a clearinghouse of information provided by people of all perspectives all around the world, available to people all around the world. I think that's a pretty cool mission, I think, and I think they're achieving it. I think they really are opening up our minds and our eyes and we're hearing all kinds of voices. It's noble. I think it sounds like all of us. I've really enjoyed it. They are subject to some criticism at TED, though, right? People say they're elitist in terms of, of who they present and what they do. There is certainly, as happens these days and everything, accusations of bias, both in the topics they pick and in the, the ways it's presented. And there is some criticism that comes up on pseudoscience, you know, that some of their people are up there presenting things that aren't fully backed up by research. I think the guys at TED would take that criticism and say, okay, fair enough, but it goes with the territory. I think that'd be their response. If we're trying to push the envelope, create this clearinghouse for all these perspectives, all these voices, you're going to sometimes tread into, into some questionable territory. We'll, we'll take it. That's, that's the cost of what we do. My criticism of TED Talks, and the one we're going to focus on, is a little more minor, but also a little more obvious. And that is that, although we get caught up in these TED Talks, if you really pay attention and step back, some of them are just kind of silly. <laughs> so they're just kind of goofy. So I'll give you a couple of examples of ones I've watched that kind of bring this to mind. There's one guy who was advocating that we bury people when they die in, in a suit made of mushrooms. And the idea is these mushrooms would biodegrade quicker, would help the body biodegrade in the soil quicker, would reinvigorate the soil and both metaphorically and physically bring us back to the soil and back, back together uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a more effective way. But can you imagine telling your grandmother, hey, we're playing, you know, don't worry, we got you covered. When you die, we're going to bury you in a suit made of mushrooms. I think most people would be like, 
I don't want to be buried in a suit made of mushrooms. <laughs> so that's kind of silly to me. I, there's another one that I saw that was frankly a little creepy. This is a woman talking about the power of seduction. And I thought she was going to be talking about like in marketing. Yeah. But it starts, it starts to get into like real seduction and even gets into like the, when the other person doesn't want to be seduced and it's just creepy. It's just not good. But my favorite is the world champion Whistler. Have you ever seen this guy? It's a few years old. This is this guy. He's the, I don't know, won the championship of whistling. And sure enough, he talks a little bit about how he got into whistling, but mostly he intersperses his talk with his whistling. And it's amazing. I mean, this guy sounds like an orchestra. But after a couple of minutes of listening to really, really competent whistling, you realize it's sort of silly. <laughs> you know, it's sort of weird that this guy spent all this time and he can make all those sounds happen. And I actually don't think I learned a thing other than I was laughing at how ridiculous the it sounds. So it goes to the territory, but some of them are just silly. We should call it for what it is. They're a little bit absurd. So that's your challenge today. Your challenge here, when we do this, Ted can make this sound interesting. You got to make something sound interesting that's kind of absurd. We're going to lean into the absurdity thing. We're going to force you to create a compelling, memorative TED talk about something really mundane and kind of silly, but you're going to have to make us get excited about it and earn our votes. What is, what's the thing your TED talk's going to have to be on? Blowing your nose. Right? No, come on. This is a part of the human condition, right? Everybody's done it. We all know about it. Something you have to do periodically and it's not exciting. Well, now it gets its own TED talk. You got to figure out how to make it interesting. You got to figure out an angle and you got to come up in a very short time and present to us your TED talk on blowing your nose. And you could, whatever you want to do, you want to go historical and maybe talk about how blowing your nose has figured in important historical events somehow and educate us on that. Something we didn't know, little known history. Perfect. You want to go technological? Talk to us about the future of clearing your nostrils and some interesting technology that you're inventing? That's cool, too. However you can make it sound TED-like, make blowing your nose come alive in a compelling way. Wow us and earn our vote with your TED Talk. Everybody get what you're doing? All right. So you're going to have eight minutes. you got to work fast to think of your topic, your angle, and then to, to, to craft it and decide how you want to present it. Is this going to be one person presenting? Do you want to, you know, to, to trade off? But spend a minute or two, and I'll give you a warning on that presentation part, because you want to wow us and make it feel like that TED Talk when you get up here on stage and do the blowing your nose TED Talk. All right? You ready? All right. I'm going to put eight minutes on the clock. Guys, huddle together. Go. Imagine that. Even though you're ready, I still get to do the bell. That's the best part. I'm telling you, it's the best part. So good. All, it's funny. It's fun to watch teams process both, you know, it's smaller team, smaller group. So maybe there's less chaos, but you guys both kind of, you guys honed in pretty quick. It seemed like you came up with ideas pretty quick. Sometimes teams just sort of flail around and, and then they start getting nervous, right? Because, oh, we're running out of time. And then they start flailing worse. So I like to watch your, uh, it's part of what's fun for me as the host to watch how the teams approach it. And I would call this sort of calm focus while eating pizza, which is incredible. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can eat it, you can eat and create at the same time. So that's amazing. Good, good for you guys. Yeah, you got you need fuel for creativity. That's very true. Research shows. All right, great. So we did. It. I think we're ready. We want to hear your compelling TED talks on blowing your nose. Now, I'm gonna randomly decide to go in reverse order. We heard the name from the the in a snack evaders first. So let's have the Lone Rangers first come up and present theirs. You could do it as a team. You could do one, however you choose to present. Let's do it. We have two microphones. We are trying to record, so it'd be good if you could find a way to talk into the microphones. And if not, well, we'll, we'll live. You want, you need two, you need one? I think we just need one. one. Okay, great. All right, guys, you ready? And everybody pay attention because we're all participating and judging. It's a very big responsibility. <laughs> so let's do it. All right, let's, let's hear it, guys. We all deal with small day-to-day -day inconveniences or maybe small genetic problems. Like me, myself, I'm anemic, but often we don't stop to think about how far as a species we have come and evolved despite these issues that we encounter in our day-to-day -day lives. So one of the ways that I blow my nose is with the neti pot, where you use the saline wash sure. and you clean it out and get all the stuff out. And one of the ways I blow my nose is by using a handkerchief. Handkerchief, yeah. And you see how we've evolved now. Instead of using like cloth black material, we can have paper towels or tissue papers to blow our nose, which makes it even more hygienic for us. Nice. But our problems with the runny nose aren't as direct as it seems. Our ancestors around 33 million years ago, this is where we started to differentiate with our biology. Our sinuses evolved back when apes were not standing upright. So when you actually nice. have the problems with your sinus, you don't have your current genetics to thank. 
Evolution is not efficient, it's sufficient. Nice. Very good. That's it. Good. Oh, that's a good kicker line, too. It's not in it, it's not efficient, it's sufficient. No, right. Well, I, I thank you guys. Well done. Let's give them a hand, everybody. Let's give them a hand. You know, I enjoyed that you, you were very kind of clean in your presentation and kind of everybody involved. That's not a right answer. You can have one person. There's no right way to do it, but that was good. You involved everybody. I also, what that one for me was it piqued my interest. I was sort of waiting. Maybe there's going to be even more of an answer, but that's okay because you're talking about an age old problem that we are evolving our approach to. And we have to continue to because we're not necessarily set up. So I kind of thought that was compelling. Like you could imagine that could be a TED talk and there's a certain amount of science and history built in there. So I like that because again, that's part of the challenge, right? Is whatever you do, make it feel like a TED talk. And you guys, we've all watched them. You clearly did that. So good for you. Well done. I'm sure you're going to have some great competition from the inner snack evaders next, but that's, you got us off to a great start. Okay. Your guys turn. You guys ready for it? How many mics you want? More than one? You want Okay. One's good. All right. All right, guys, give a hand for the Inner Snack Evaders. Woo! Yeah, that's right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our TED Talk. Today, they gave us the prompt of blowing your nose. I'm a scientist. Blowing your nose is not good, okay? Due to recent discoveries, we have discovered that blowing your nose is, in fact, the worst possible thing. The better thing to do is to pick it, people. <laughs> your nostrils okay so the science behind why blowing your nose is the worst possible thing you could do is because your boogers don't have germs y'all germs are mixed when you blow chunks of brain fly out when that mixes oh. with air and then hits an item that's where the germs come from y'all so when you pick your nose it's coming into contact with an item before the air so it cancels out <laughs> no air is touched. No germs are happening. Okay. And you can eat them too. You know, we wear face masks now. You can just hide the booger straight from your nose to your mouth. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing, right? It's an advantage. You get protein without the negative side effects like, I don't know, E. coli, whatever these other germs problems are. So think about it, y'all. Air is polluted. Items are infested with germs. Your nose is perfectly fine. It's inside. So pick it. Do not blow it. Got it? Yes. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. The inner snack of it is pick it, don't blow it. I, that's a very clear point of view, right? It's a very clear advocating a very clear approach with some scientific background, right? It's not the, it's, it's not, you don't want to mix all that in. You want to just get it, pick it up. I, I'm impressed. I'm, yeah, and Eric acting out. <laughs> the picky. Eric seems to have had some experience, but I'm just, <laughs> you know, I, I could be wrong, but it seemed that way. Very good. Give him another hand. In the snack of it. Well done. Yeah, this is going to be tough. I think both those seem like TED Talks to me, and that's a great challenge you rose to. And, you know, we, we joked around at the silliness of some of these talks, but I gave you a particularly silly topic to see if you could still make it sound not serious. I don't know if that's what you went for, but but credible and within the rules that we understand TED Talks to be. And I think you did that. So that, that's well done. You did it in a quick amount of time. I was impressed that both teams, the this presentation was pretty polished. You weren't stumbling. Um, you kind of each knew what you were supposed to do in your presentation. You each had your part. So in eight minutes to both come up with the idea and to uh, get a flow in the presentation in a way that, you know, could be a TED Talk. seems pretty good. If I sent you off for an hour, you know, and said, we're going to record this and do a mock TED Talk, like on a, you know, post it on their website. I bet you we could come up with something that looked like a real TED Talk based on what you started in eight minutes, right? So really good. So, so well done. And I like, you both ended with a slogan, right? So it's, it's pick it, don't blow it. And it's evolution is, is not efficient, but it's sufficient. That's pretty good. I mean, those are pretty, pretty good quick. So well done. Let's give ourselves a hand. All right. Now it's time to vote. So let me set up the computer here. Pull out your cell phones, please. And you want to go, oh, yeah. You want to go to kahoot.it on your browser and your phone, please. Kahoot.it. And you should see a window where you're going to enter a code. So tell me if you get to that. You got it? Excellent.
Mute that. All right, do you see the code? So in that window, we're supposed to enter the code. There it is, 892-2568. And enter a name in, you can enter your real name. Actually, yeah, enter whatever name, yeah, whatever you like. Nickname, real name, doesn't matter. It's just about getting all the votes. And when you enter, you should see your name come up. So if you enter it and don't see it come up, let me know. We've got six of us left, right? Sharon, you're voting too, right? All right, seven of us then. So I see five. That's all right. Don't worry. When I start rushing, that's when I screw up. Anybody else having trouble? You got that code? Eight, eight, nine, two. There we go. Oh, look at that. Wow, Mary, that's impressive. All right, we got six. I think we're looking for one more. Sharon, you in? Sierra, you're in? Anybody not in? Somebody's not in. Okay, here we go. Sorry. Getting there? Some IT support. I'm the worst. I never type anything right. I always type the number wrong. Yeah, no, not yet. We want everybody to have a vote. Is it working? Are you not in? No. There we go. Excellent. Okay. All right. So. We're going to vote. It, there's going to be four choices because we thought we'd have four teams. So you're going to vote either A or B. All right. So if you think that the um, in a snack evaders should be the winner, um, the guys who did uh, who did um, pick it don't blow it. You would vote A. And if you think that it should be the Lone Rangers who did evolution is uh, su efficient but not sufficient, you're going to vote B and don't vote. CRD. So A, you go red, B, you go blue. So it's either red or blue. Uh, red for in a snack evaders, blue for lone rangers. Let's see what we get. Looks like we got six votes so far. So we're waiting on one more. Oh, oh, oh very close. But it's in a snack evaders by one. Give him a hand, in a snack evaders. Woo! Now let's give a hand to lone rangers because I think they were excellent. I'm impressed, and I think we're going to have to have a special prize. I think everybody's going to get an Imagine That sticker, right? Not only are we going to give the po they're going to give the the the, uh, the trophy. We'll give you a sticker. So let's go. Let's go. Uh, in the snack evaders, come on up here. Let's get you with your trophy. Sharon, you want to get a shot of this? Come on, guys. The presentation. Stand right up front right here. Sharon's going to get your picture. This is exciting. All right? You want to hold that right in the center there, guys? There you go. There they are. Give them a hand. All right, well done. You guys hold on to it. It's the key. You get it. So, guys, that's our game. I really appreciate you coming to play. You know, it's um, when we do it on a big stage, it's basically that, but we do it a little bigger. We have three competitions. We have teams on stage, and the audience are uh, separate doing the voting uh, just because when we have more. So it's more you picture like a TV game show, and Sierra's seen it, but sort of uh, uh, in, the, in the theater. Uh, we're working on turning it into a podcast. Sierra was in a class that we had over the communications school to help me begin to develop it, which we've continued to work on, and COVID slowed us down but didn't get us off the track. So we've got a pilot of our podcast. We use the game as an entry point. We, we do the competition. Then you, we use it as an entry point into conversations. So we, we, we look up somebody who might have had something to do with what we just did a comp competition on and talk to them about what it looks like in real life, what creativity and teamwork look like. So in this case, we might get, contact somebody who did a real TED Talk, maybe a doctor who did a TED Talk on something that was truly a medical thing, not silly like this. Then we, he listens to the chat. He'd listen to what you guys did. We'd have a few laughs. And then we'd get into uh, their, their field and how they look at creativity and teamwork. So the whole thing is a fun way to maybe get your brain working uh, on creativity and innovation and a fun way to get you working with people that you probably see all the time but don't have a chance to have fun with and maybe collaborate and get to know in a different way. We do it with businesses and nonprofits and students. And so we love playing it. Um, and, and, you know, hopefully we do it on Zoom during this COVID era. Hopefully get back to doing more live events as people get comfortable with that. So I encourage you, if you've got a class you think might be interested in doing it, let me know. I can talk to your teacher about that. If you've got a group of people you're involved with outside of school or at school that you think might have fun, we'd love to do it. It's a great way to get together and, and have a good time. And we appreciate it. You guys did great. You guys were really great creative warriors. Well done. Have a great day. Thanks for doing it. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>